friends, and welcome to day four of our seven days of prayer. We have been spending time this week praying and seeking God for the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit. On day one, we explored the reality that the Holy Spirit is the connecting link between God and man. On day two, we learned that the Holy Spirit lives within us. That's right. On day three, we learned that the Holy Spirit is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Now today we are going to explore the role and the work of the Holy Spirit as a prayer translator. A prayer translator? A prayer translator. If you and I go to a foreign country where a language is spoken that we do not fully understand, it's going to be hugely difficult to communicate our message to the other party. One way of getting around that challenge is to have someone who knows the language of the person we are trying to communicate with, who can translate what we are saying in our language into the language that the other person understands. Well, the Bible teaches us that this person, the Holy Spirit, is a language translator. He translates our prayers so that they can be understood and accepted in heaven. Well, don't take my word for it. Turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, and let us explore some verses in Romans chapter 8. Romans follows the book of Acts, chapter 8. Let's begin in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. What a precious promise in the word of God. The Bible tells us here, that the Spirit helps our weakness. What weakness is this talking about? Well, the text goes on to say that sometimes we don't even know what we ought to pray. Sometimes we don't know how to put our desires into words. The feelings and the emotions that we grapple with are hard to translate into words. And then it's even more difficult for us to put it in the language that Heaven understands. So here is what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit takes our prayers and he fixes the words so that as they are born before Jesus, who makes intercession for us, they can be accepted in the heavenly sanctuary. What a powerful uh, arrangement. Because here he is interpreting and translating. There's a beautiful mother at our church, Sister Green. Sister Green is one of the most fervent individuals in, in prayer and in devotion. And she has a very soft spoken voice. And when Sister Green prays, at the end of her prayer, she will say, Lord, won't you string these few words together for me that they may be acceptable to you? What an honest and sincere prayer. Indeed, the Bible is teaching us that sometimes what we pray for may not be the right things, or we may not even know how to put the words together, but the Holy Spirit does that for us. He can interpret even our groanings that cannot be put into words, and he translates that into heaven's language that they can be presented. And you know, that is why we ought to trust the Lord. That is why in verse 28, the Bible says, And we know, we're not guessing, we're not wondering, we know. 
we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Why? Because they have the Holy Spirit with them. As we need to send up a quick 911 call to glory, the Holy Spirit takes that message and packages it and it is born before the throne of God with power, with efficiency, with clarity. There is no delay. There is no misunderstanding. The precious work of the Holy Spirit to translate your prayers and mine. Do you want the assurance that your prayers are heard? Do you want the assurance that as you pray, even though your language may be feeble, God has given us the Holy Spirit to put our feelings into words that they may be presented in heaven. Let us thank God for this gift of the Holy Spirit. And even so, let us even double and triple our frequency in prayer. There is no fear in presenting our petitions before the throne of God if we have such an able, efficient helper as the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Loving Father, what a joy it is today to know that our prayers are translated and born before your throne by the Holy Spirit. That sometimes, God, we don't know how to put our desires, our feelings, our concerns into words. But if we would simply trust you and come boldly to the throne of grace, the Holy Spirit will do the work of stringing our words together and fixing our vocabulary and syntax so that heaven may register, record, and respond to our prayer requests. What a joy it is. Even on this day, O oh God, we come before you, laying our desires before your feet. We cast our cares upon you. We know you care for us. Hear the longings and the desires of our hearts. Some mother may be praying for a child. Some father may be praying for someone who is no longer walking with you. Someone, God, is suffering some hardship, financial hardship health crisis, some difficulty. But God, as we place our petitions before you, you've promised to give us the Holy Spirit who will translate those prayers into language that God understands and that God fully accepts. We thank you for this blessing. Teach us now, Lord, how to pray and lead us into frequent, fervent intercession as you do your will on this earth, even as it is done in heaven. We thank you and we praise you for the precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.